board member, you go, board meeting you go to, the first thing they talk about are the reports of going to the conference in Albany and saying you have to reform the Wix law, and nothing happens. So I believe this is going to this is going to give us clearly a better chance. Then once that happens, then you can consider school district. I think then you can then consider these authorities that are, act as remote and unaccountable uh, governments in New York State. Uh, the uh, and I, I believe that in my heart. Yes, sir. One of the things that I found uh, since I've been the mayor, which is five years, when I first started, nobody wanted to volunteer for anything. You could ask people to volunteer for this, volunteer for that. They refused. But by reaching out to some of the younger people in town, now it's starting to grow. I have a very, very active Chamber of Commerce, the Westfield Development Corporation, uh, which is doing wonders for us. I mean, we uh, making connections with the politicians and so forth. Did everyone hear that? Did everyone hear the, the mayors talking about how their young people have increased interest in civic engagement in their government? I can't tell you how thrilled I am to hear that because that's been my experience as well. As a result, tonight I'm also going to make a proposal which you might have an interest. I did a little research. Do you know that under the education law in New York State, school districts have the right, it's, it's education law section 1804.12, Man, what a nerd, huh? Uh, the, uh, <laughs> that gives school boards the right to add a student as an ex officio non-voting sure. member. It's very exciting, it's dynamic. Tonight I'm going to propose that we do that in town governance. And we let local college students serve on a town board, a newly downsized town board, not to vote, but to participate, to learn, to contribute, to have the energy of youth. I am going to respectfully disagree with a little bit. I, un I un understand especially folks who When I said I've been to 255 town or village board meetings the past year and a half, haven't seen you there. Haven't seen my Erie County colleagues there. And the reason, sir, is it's not, it's because they've given up. And they've oh, given absolutely. up. absolutely. There's no question about it. And they've given up because the system acts not as an invitation to their input, but rather as a wall. And I think that's another benefit of, of energizing the system by changing it, reducing. And tonight, I'm, and the, what the point of this work is, is to summon people back and, and, and transform, if you think about it, this came to me a couple of weeks ago, I thought, wait a minute, we, we've gotten off track here. We shouldn't have town board meetings. That says it all. It's all about the town board and how hard they work and how it comes. We should have town meetings that emphasize not politicians but people. And in my experience, sir, going to all these town board meetings, I will tell you this, over and over again, I do see folks stand up and say, Oh, uh, um, or at Clarence Town Board, I'm Jane Smith, and you remember me. I used, to be, I used to be chairman of the Youth Services Committee, and we did a great job, and about 20 years ago to 12 years ago, I heard this directly, uh, you abolished it, but here comes summer, and we're willing, we're still here, we'll do it. And they'd say no. They would, they'd ignore her, or say no, or, or, or say we'll call you, and then they'd never hear from her. And the reason, again, is because the boards are trying, the members are trying to hold on to as many responsibilities as possible to look indispensable. I will tell you this, one of the most, you know it's the truth. <laughs> One of the most interesting findings in my study is the, um, the practice that destroyed American urban government in the 19th and 20th centuries, and continues in some backward cities like my city of Buffalo today. If you're an African American woman and you live on the east side of Buffalo and you've got a nice daughter and she goes out to catch the bus every morning but there's a pothole and it splashes on her and you want that pothole filled, she picks up the phone, you know who she calls? The council member because you got to know the politician to get something done. Mm -hmm. And what my study found is that that pernicious practice has seeped into the American suburbs. As council members and village trustees say, call me. Mm -hmm. And it's most dramatically reflected in a little slide I'm going to show folks tonight of the senior citizen van in the town of Hamburg, which drives around and on the side of it, what does it have? The names of the politicians. Mm -hmm. It should have the names of the department head of senior services and the number to call so you can get a ride. And you don't have to call the politicians, you call the department head, or if the swing's broken, you call the parks department. Or if, uh, if uh, you, know, you need a ride again to, to the doctors, you call the van. The, um, this is a system that's gotten out of control. It's no one's fault but our own. There's a great opportunity to revive it. I think that's a great point, which is, and, I, and, and I'm very proud of this idea to talk about tonight. I also think, by the way, if you notice, you know, high school students come to town board meetings or village board meetings once. I'm also going to propose tonight that it become a precondition to, to graduation from public high schools for a number of hours of services in the town hall. Think about it. They do Think that in Westfield. Yeah. They, come to our, they come to our village board our, meeting. Our uh, Fredonia School District does that, but it's, it's kind of interesting because the kids wait 
to the night before the grade comes out. <laughs> we look up and we have 15 young people sitting in the audience. And right. it's great to engage them, to bring them in. Right. But I wish, they'd, I wish they would have that assignment at the beginning of the marking period and carry it through uh, at least two or three times so that they have a sense of how what we're discussing in September is completed in November or carried on. I great think. point, great but they point. Do, the great school point. district does send them. I'm pushing the envelope a little bit. I hope you'll be pleased, but I, I'm pushing the envelope for purposes of maybe getting something like that. My proposal actually is to, is to create a number of hours, 40 hours, during the course of the school year in which they have to log in there and think about it. In my work, by the way, in these conferences and all this work and the volunteers, I always attempt to engage college students. I have interns and, you know, and, and assistants, and the, you know, the vitality and youth and energy and sense of possibility that they bring is something that our, our, our municipal buildings could benefit from. Uh, the, um, by, by way of closing, can I, I'm going to. I'm full of stories today. This one's this one's from my mom and dad. The uh, the um, as uh, we, as everyone knows too well, I'm not married. I still can't find a woman unwise enough, but, <laughs> or misguided enough. Uh, so, so send I, send names. <laughs> <laughs> I am fishing here a little today. Yeah, yeah, a little blue book. So the uh, um, I don't have children, but when I was a boy. Um, my father did something very interesting. He was, you know, he was uh, very active, he, and, and as I say, uh, worked in Washington, so he was never home. He was a big baby. He hated being away from his children. So he came, devised this wonderful solution, which was he took his seven kids and he divided us into groups of two. And except my sister Karen, who had her own group, we were all very envious of her. And every time <laughs> he left the house, he would rotate and take two of us with him. Uh, so he would go to, to like my grammar school in the beginning of the year and say, hey, listen, every Every month or so, Kevin's going to disappear, but don't worry about it, he's with me. So the, uh, instead of, it, it would be so exciting to look forward to your turn, because you didn't have to go to school, and I'd be, we'd ride to the airport, and we, as we'd go to the airport, if we passed a, a school bus, my father would make me hide under the dashboard. <laughs> <laughs> He'd say, don't let him get a hold of you, Kevin. <laughs> but the rule was that um, he took us to every meeting, every party, every lunch, every dinner, which would appall my mother, he took us everywhere. But in exchange, we had to be dressed, ready, we had to have a notebook, we had to take notes, and every Saturday evening we had to turn in a paper <laughs> based on the experience, which he graded. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't marry you either. <laughs> Smart girl. Uh, I didn't want to interrupt. Were, no, you, were you done with your yes, story? Yes, ma'am. Lovely story. Yeah. Before we close this wonderful gathering, I just would like you to let us all know if anybody in this room is interested in working in Chautauqua County on what you discussed today, how we can be apprised of what to do next. Wonderful. Two things. We have a great website. If you do have access to the internet, if you don't, I'll give you my card. But the website is uh, www.letpeopledecide, one word, letpeopledecide.org. And you, there's a, you can click on join our cause and send me your email, and I'll email you right back. Great. And we can have uh, we can have direct communication in that in that way. We can have a more humane one and less uh, less uh, sophisticated one, less Twitter or Facebook. If you want, I'll give you a card. Just give me a call anytime. I am uh, I am um, uh, I do have one friend. She's a lovely woman, and she always says that she can always tell when I'm not feeling well because my uh, wildly annoying energy becomes only mildly annoying. Uh, the, uh, but the thing is, is, is I'll come anytime, I'll go anywhere, I'll make this presentation to anyone, any basement, any group, because I think people are responding, and I think it's a, a great opportunity, and there's much, very little to do. I love the fact, I can't wait till next Wednesday in Orchard Park, and please God, if we can triumph there, I love the fact of watching the experience. I can't tell you how it's like to watch, you know, polls open um, for a little idea that came to me at 4 o'clock in the morning as I read a book and to see people walk in and television stations and, and polling and inspectors. And it's just so wonderful and life affirming and democratic governance affirming. I, I just uh, think it's magnificent. You had a Along the same lines, what's the timeline? Is it still possible to go out and collect signatures and get it on the November ballot? Uh, the, um, <coughs> what's interesting is, you know, the, uh, the, the experience, the, this is an interesting point, the experience of going door to door in America to collect signatures, forgive me fellas again, it's been a little bit ruined by politicians. They only do it in what's called the candidate designating period, which is in July, you know. Uh, the, um, I have to tell you something, it's one of the great experiences in life. In the past, you're not gonna believe this, in the past now two and a half years, my, again, my students keep track, I've, I've visited almost 15,000 homes in, throughout Erie County, and it's like having a front row seat 
on American life. And when someone invites you into their kitchen or living room, and I've got to tell you something, it's a great privilege. I mean, I just tell you what I've learned, 15,000. Most of us struggle. Most Western New Yorkers lead, lead lives that would make you weep. And you see so many people with children with development disorders and, and physical ailments and, 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 and with their moms and dads who are in their 90s or 80s and, and no one taking care of them. And it's just, it's people, we're the greatest community in America and we don't, we deserve the finest government. And also all they want, all they want from their government is just an even break, a fair shake. And they feel that they're not getting it.